Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today I went to the beach this morning, and then I came back and took a shower, and I thought, okay, I am going to go ahead and just record myself putting on my makeup and doing my hair. And I don't know, I had my camera in the car, and um, I don't know if my settings got messed up or what, but it looks fuzzy or something. I don't really think it's out of focus. I just don't know if I've messed up a setting or whatever, but I think you'll still be able to tell how a lot of these products perform. And that that I just put on was the Magic Cream. I got a sample and I love it. And then this is the Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury, and this is the number three. And what I've been loving it with is the L'Oreal Infallible Matte or whatever, the one that's in the squeezy tube. And then this is a Smashbox buffer brush. So what I do is I put on one wand full of that filter. You know, it's kind of like I rub that wand everywhere until it's pretty much dry. And so I'm kind of spreading it out like I would a foundation. That little brush is perfect. And so you can see the kind of glow it gives you. Like it would be hard for me just to wear that. Okay, now I'm using the L'Oreal... Um, infallible matte, I believe is what it's called. Everything will be below. And I'm just putting on, I'm trying to, you know, just do, um, I reminded myself when I was editing this of like Lisa Eldridge, you know, using that little brush. <laughs> and you're thinking, how does she do that? But I'm trying to do that because I feel like you can spread it out further. And um, so, and this color works really well. Um, at first, it looks kind of yellow or whatever, but it, it spreads nicely, and it just wears so nicely and looks beautiful over that flawless filter. That product is amazing. I, I've never had something that you put on your skin like that, and it doesn't move. It's like you put something right over it, this matte foundation, and it just looks so pretty, and it it's like it adds a little bit of extra coverage or something. It's just, it's wonderful. It kind of shears out, you know, this and the double wear. It's just, I recommend everyone try it. It's really good. You can see how the glow is still coming through that L'Oreal matte. And you know, that stuff is, it's really matte. So I've kind of spread it out everywhere. And now I'm just taking my hands and kind of just pressing it in. And you know what I mean, just get getting it in there. Okay, this is something I found. Well, I didn't find it. Brooke had it. I thought I was going to find it, and then when I didn't, I asked Brooke, and she had it. But it's the NARS, uh, that creamy matte concealer that's in the little pot, and I've just been loving it. And the color is creme brulee. And I'm trying to do kind of like a all Charlotte Tilbury tutorial here, but I don't have her. Um, I don't have her concealer. So, and I'm just taking it and kind of using a little bit of this wherever I want it to be lighter, you know, around my nose and mouth and everything, just to kind of brighten up the center of my face. And even this layers so well over the other two. So I get all of that done first. And then I'm kind of just blending the edges. And then I took the IT, um, that big ball brush, and I'm dipping it in her Charlotte Tilbury um, powder, the pressed powder number two, which is another phenomenal product. Okay, now I'm using um, a MAC brush. I'll, no, that's a Wayne Goss, the anniversary brush, and I'm using her bronzer blush duo. So I'm using the bronzer right here all over. Tighten up my jawline and then go down my neck. And now I'm going to oh, do a little bit more. And then I'm going to tap it in there lightly and then just put a little bit of blush on. And this color is really pretty. <laughs> Am I making funny faces? Okay, this is another good product. It's the Highlight Wand. And it is beautiful. Just watch how pretty it is when I blend it in my cheek. It is a real, I, I would consider it a grown-up highlight. It's so much better than like the RMS Living Luminizer. It's nothing like those iridescent powders. It just is gorgeous. 
and I'm just doing around my lips and my cupid's bow and then a little bit on my forehead because I mean it's it's not shimmery I mean you can really do that and it just gives you kind of a glow okay let's see what I'm going to do next here oh this is um, a Lancome bronzer it's actually new to me but it's their old school bronzer um, one of my friends that works in Ulta told me about it. She used to work for Lancome, and she said that was still her favorite bronzer. So I went and got it, and it is really pretty. Okay, this is the Urban Decay Minor Sin. And one of my subscribers, Esther, told me that they are discontinuing the Minor Sin. So if you're like me and you love it, we need to stock up. Okay, this is Charlotte Tilbury's Legendary Brows. And it's in the color Bridget and it's you really do not need much else um i end up going back in with the laura mercier uh, i think it's taupe blonde or something here in a few minutes just to extend them a little bit and do the arch a little bit better okay here is the tom ford blender brush which is just the best brush and i'm using the clinique sunset glow as an all-over base when I use this it's just like nothing can go wrong I mean because this on its own is enough and it just adds the perfect base and then um, I'm going in okay now I'm taking a smaller brush and just putting that Clinique Sunset Glow underneath my eyes the texture is amazing the color is amazing I mean it just gives see how it just gives the perfect amount of contour I mean I could just go right from there really but I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Dolce Vita quad and right there I'm using the second over on the top right color just to do the crease focusing most of the color on the outer edge and then bringing it over to the inner corner just with that same brush and I'm just kind of dabbing the tip of the brush in there and I'm getting a little bit more oh I'm doing it to the bottom okay now I'm going in with that darker color on the bottom left and I'm kind of darkening that outer edge the outer V I thought that was in the frame, but you know me. Okay, so here I am still darkening up that outer V, and then I'm bringing it up, you know, across the lash line a little bit. And that is a Sedona Lace brush. Those brushes are good brushes. I like those. And then I'm putting a little bit on the outer edge of the bottom. I had um, a Mac artist tell me one time, and it's most of the time it's true. Whatever you do to the top, do to the bottom. Okay, now I'm taking that really sparkly color. I believe it's the bottom right, and I'm just adding it to the lid. It's like a sparkly, kind of a chunky, sparkly, coppery color. Okay, now I'm taking the lightest color, which is the top left. It's like a cream color, and you'll see in a minute. I'm adding it to right under the brow, not the whole brow bone, but just right under the brow and the um, inner corner of my eye. Oh, and Brooke just came in. We went to the beach together. We sat together, but we drove separate because she stayed longer than I did. Okay, now I'm taking that same brush and I was going in that first color, which is the top right, and just kind of blending out that top, kind of marrying everything together. Okay, and I need to try a liquid liner from her because I'm using the pencil gel pencil liner and I am just going to do a line across. It's Barbarella Brown. But you'll see here, the shape of my eyes, they're so rounded, especially my right eye, that it's hard to get, you'll see, when I go from the outer edge, see how I have to kind of go across my eyeball and it goes in so much. It's hard for me if it's not liquid and doesn't have a long, that's why the Lancome Art Liner is so easy. It's hard for me to get that inner corner 
unless I do really thick. So I'm doing the best I can. And then I'm, instead of doing like a dramatic wing, I'm just kind of winging the very edge out a little bit and then putting a little bit at the bottom, just in the lash line. And this color is beautiful. It's a real dark, rich brown. Okay, and for the lips, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. Something everyone should have. This is very, very similar to Lancome Ideal. Maybe not quite as much of a rosy brown, but just an awesome lip liner. And then I'm using my one of my favorite Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, and I have a bunch of them, and that is Bitch Perfect. And it's you can see it's like a nudie pink, but it really looks good when you mix it with that iconic nude lip liner. It gives it more of a peachy nude look. And I don't know if I showed it. I think I might have skipped it. That's the Laura Mercier brow. I'm kind of just finishing up that brow. But I did put a little bit of Buxom Celeste gloss in the center of my lips. Okay. My lashes are getting longer and healthier. I've been steady with my new lash. And this is the Bad Gal Bang Mascara from Benefit. And it looked so good. I don't know why. I put false lashes on. I had some lashes that I bought for half off at our Rite Aid. They were Jessie's Girl lashes, and I just wanted to use them just to see if I liked them, but really, this look looks better without them. I should not have put them on. Please don't unsubscribe <laughs> because you're going to hate these lashes. They do not look good, but, and they were not easy to put on, and I think what I'll do is probably give them to Brooke because she likes to cut them in half and just use the outer edge or else I might do that too. Just use the outer part of them because I got them for like $2 a pair. But um, I hope you can see too, I am like touching the root of my eyelashes. And because I like mine to be kind of spiky and kind of clumpy, you'll see I'm going kind of to the left and then pushing them to the right and then to the left, and then to the right, and I like them to kind of crisscross. And then this is the MAC um, Extended Play Giga Black Mascara that I like for my lower lash line. And I just um, put a little bit on the outside and I kind of pull it out. Okay, another Sedona Lace Brush, the Angled Brush, and this again is the Charlotte Tilbury Number no. 2 Pressed powder. Okay, now I've got my lashes on and I'm going to do my hair. This is the Monate Rejuvenique Oil. I usually put just a few drops in my hairline right there. I just want to keep my scalp good and keep that hair growing and it's kind of like fertilizer. It's just good for your scalp. And um, so and then I'm going to take a few drops rub it in my hands, and then go over the ends of my hair. And um, we were supposed to get our hair cut, our hair done tonight, but we changed it to tomorrow night. Morgan had something to do, so I'm going to get a couple inches cut off my hair, I believe. But that is the Wow Coconut Elixir, and it's good stuff. And then this is the Kerastase um, Blow Dry Incroyable. I just put that in the lengths of my hair. I do two pumps. And then this next thing that I'm going to show you is something that you do every, I usually do it about once a week. It's the Wow Dream Coat Super Coat Spray. And it's supposed to be good for humidity, keeping the humidity out of your hair. And um, it I would not say that it's, you know, does any big miracle smoothing or anything, but I do think it helps. And so, John, I mean, Brooke has my big comb that I usually use, so I'm using this old pick that I have. And um, when I part my hair, I just kind of let it fall wherever it does, which is usually kind of right off center. I have a little bit of a cowlick up there. And um, I decided I wanted to curl my hair. So 
I read this tip when I was reading about air drying your hair, that it's a good thing to kind of go over your hair with a paper towel, that paper towels really get a lot of the moisture out of your hair that even a towel can't get, and it's so true. So I'm just kind of going through and drying my hair with, um, this is a good brush. I don't know if you guys remember Yvette. Um, is it Beauty by Miss Outlaw? At Miss Outlaw Beauty or whatever. She's the one that told me about this brush. It's kind of like a combination of a vent brush and boar hair, boar bristles. And so I'm using it. It gives good tension. So I'm kind of smoothing my hair out. But um, it's still just no matter what I put on it or what I condition it with, I can put pure coconut oil on it and my ends are still going to be frizzy and dry because they've just been, you know, they've just been through so much. But um, eventually they'll get trimmed off. And um, so I'm still drying. I kind of just do a rough dry around the root with this brush. And I kind of, I don't want to bend over and do it or anything because I want to keep around my part kind of flat. So I'm rough drying it some more. And this is my Elkim blow dryer. Okay, so I'm going around again and just kind of smoothing that down because just where I have all the different lengths of hair, where I have new growth from my nate, I have some broken hair, I just try to get it smoothing and trying to blend it in where it's kind of, I don't know if you call that balayage or whatever it is, color melt, whatever. And um, so there you go. And um, so then I take the crown of my head hair right there and I do one big, I grab my Olivia Garden great big brush and um, just give it some oomph in the back. And I'm just getting it all brushed out and smooth and then getting some tension to it. And I'm blow drying the root for a little bit. And then I kind of bring it up so I can blow dry that whole piece of hair. And then I just leave it up there a lot of times and I focus on what's underneath. Because you know how it stays kind of wet right there at the nape of your neck? And then right now I'm trying to decide, do I want to straighten it? Do I want to curl it? Do I just want to put it in a bun? And um, I put on my dress. This is a new one from The Gap and it's just a t-shirt dress and I love it. And I love the color, I love the fit, everything. And then I decided I'm gonna go ahead and just go around it real quick with my Hot Tools curling iron, the great big one, the two inch. And I just split my hair in half I brush through it with this brush here that I love. It's another Olivia Garden brush. And um, I go over it with this curling iron just to, it, it is curly at first, but it won't be. Eventually it'll just have bends on the end, kind of like waves. And um, typically I would sleep on my hair, but um, I just, you know, I had to take a shower when I got home from the beach, so. And, um, I have already sprayed, that I didn't, I cut this out accidentally, but I had sprayed Paul Mitchell hot off the press heat protectant all over it and kind of run it through, especially on the ends. And then you'll see me looking in a minute so I can tell you, but I do not have this curling iron heated all the way up. I think I have it, I'm looking right now, I'm getting ready to say it. Three fifty. <laughs> I couldn't remember if it was three forty or three fifty. So it's at three fifty, and that's really hot as I need to go because my hair's dry and the ends are damaged from bleaching it, and it's um, my hair's naturally curly, frizzy, so it takes curl pretty easily. But um, you know, if your hair's harder to curl and, you know, healthy and you're not worried about it, you might want to bump up the heat because that's not really, really hot, especially because that curling iron is kind of coated with that purple coating. And here I'm just kind of doing everything back. And then a lot of times I'll do my very top bangs back again because I have some shorter pieces in there that were new growth that are growing out that will stick out. 
and I just get that to go back in there. So, and then I spray it um, with my KMS hairspray. I don't know if you can even still get that anymore. I stocked up. And then I just kind of sped through. I did the other side the exact same way. And I'm going to spray it. And I think <laughs> I'm about finished. That is it. So I hope you guys liked it. Thank you. Bye-bye.